Do it series three, program six, transmission copy, dubbed VTR number 7346. into the office. Well, I had to bring him in. There was no one to look after him at home. Ruff, ruff. Listen, I've got no time to argue with you now. I just wanted to tell you that I've got those publicity photos you asked for. I shall have severe words with you very shortly. In the meantime, I must get back to a very important meeting. Over and out. Ruff, ruff. Great. He thinks there is a dog up here. Now to make him believe that not only is there a dog, but it's an invisible one. Try it. The invisible dog. All you need is an old dog collar and lead and a wire coat hanger to stiffen your lead and bring your dog to heel. Now, summon up your muscle power because you're going to have to chop up your coat hanger and you want to cut it here and here, those two points. And the best thing to use are pliers or wire cutters. Now, a really nifty way of doing it is to make a really good nick in your coat hanger. Just wiggle it back and forwards, make the nick, and you should be able to break it with your bare hands. There you go. Now for the other side. Again, a really good nick. Power out the coat hanger and yourself. Straight through. What power. And now to straighten out your coat hanger. Easiest way. If you put your pliers right near the bend that you want to straighten, like so, grip them at the end, and up it comes. Not bad. Now for the other side. Again, near the bump. Hold it tight. And straight up. Just do that tiny bump there. Right, a nearly straight coat hanger. Now you just need, the last thing to do is to tweak the end. About the width of your pliers. So, there it goes. That should do it. Now, if your lead on the wrong side, you'll find that where your lead meets the collar, there's a little hole. And that's where you want to insert your coat hanger. And if it is a bit difficult to get in, you might have to ease it a bit with a screwdriver. All right. Now, bend that a little bit. Now, this is the worst joint to make. Sticky tape. Oh, our power's gone. And tape it down really firmly to your lead. And you work your way all the way up the lead. As tightly as you can. The last bit you want to tape in really well because that's the sharp end and you don't want it sticking into anything. So round it 
goes. Then take your invisible dog for a walk. Come on then. Oh, no, don't go against there. Sit. Oh, it's a good boy. Right, Sheila, where's that dog? There's a good boy. <clears throat> That's a rather uh, unusual looking dog. What sort of breed do you call that? Oh, it's a Transylvanian Water Spaniel. Very rare breed. You see very little of them these days. Mm, I can see that. Of course, there is a legend in Transylvania that when you're in love, you just can't see them at all. Really? Yes. Well, that would explain it. Of course, that wouldn't affect either of us. Oh, of course not, no. By the way, how are you and Rosalind getting on? Oh, it's funny you should ask that. Well, it's the same as usual, very difficult. I mean, she's very sarcastic, sometimes downright catty. Oh, don't mention cats, Norman. Not in front of a dog. I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> you sure you've got that dog under control? I mean, it doesn't look very friendly to me. Oh, it's quite all right, as long as you don't mention certain words. Especially one word. What? Well, the one word that sends all dogs bananas. I don't know what you mean. Parambulate. Put one foot in front of the other. W-A-L-K. Oh, you mean... Walkies! Norman! Well, now you've said it. You can't not take him for one. Oh, all right then, Sheila. Well, seems much calmer, more docile. Come on then, let's go for a walk. Come on. Oh, Sheila, I've left those... Sit! Heel! Stay! I've left those photographs for you on the desk. Oh, thanks, Norm. Oh, and uh, talking of which, it's about time you've got made yourself more useful. I don't believe it. Make it. Most people have ordinary frames for pictures, but I've got something really eye-catching planned for these. A bit of double vision. And you need two pictures the same size and a thin piece of card that they'll fit on exactly. Perfect. Then take one of your pictures, measure it up. Now this one measures 20 centimetres, so I'll divide it into 10 strips of 2 centimetres each. Make it easy for myself. Then mark it off. Dot, dot. And of course, you don't have to use photographs. You can use things from magazines, postcards, whatever you fancy. And then when you've marked the top, do the bottom as well. you see why in a moment. Because when you join the lines, you don't want wonky strips. So join the dots. And the next one. And when you've done it to this photograph, you have to do it to the other one and the piece of card. Boring bit. Turn the page. Fast work. Then take a piece of card and concertina it. Fold it one way, using the line as a guide and pressing down the creases really well and then the other way. All neatly folded. Back to one of the photos. Time to chop one up. But uh, don't do this to a family portrait. Now, I've always wanted to cut a strip off Norman. The thing to remember, though, is keep it in order because you don't want a jigsaw puzzle on your hands. Now, to put him in his place, stick him in alternate spaces. But again, remember to keep him in order so you don't end up with a jigsaw puzzle.
Come on, Norman. A divided Norman. Now to deal with me. Into strips and stick me in the gaps. A confused person. But if I move it this way, mugshot of me. And this way, mugshot of Norman. Couple of mugs. It's been an awfully long time. I wonder. He can't be. Now, I don't know which department you work in, but I will not allow staff to service their cars during working hours. Well, there you are, Norman. I was getting worried about you. Oh, I bet you were, yes. Oh, yes, we had a nice time. Oh, were you a good doggy? Yes, certainly was. And did you have a lovely walk-in? Oh, yes. He still is. He's in the park. Very clever, Norman. Now, what did you expect, Miss Gilby? Now, enough is enough. Now, get back to work. And please, in future, keep me informed about who's working in the Loading Bay area. Now, just watch it. Norman. Actually, I'm rather busy at the moment. You did tell me to get on with my work. Don't you want to monitor it? No, no time for that, no. I've got a paper to put to bed. What is it? My eat it. I'm staying. Yes, the paper can stop up late tonight. Eat it. Today, I'm going to show you how to make pun cakes. Excuse me, Shirley. Don't, don't you mean pancakes? No. Pun cakes, you know, pun, play on words. Oh, so, pun cakes, sorry, yes. Got all the ingredients here. Flour. Oh, first, you pick your flour. That's the idea, Norman. Next, milk, pasteurised. <laughs> That's very good, past your eyes. That's very good. <laughs> and one egg. Exactly what I was going to say. 
let's get cracking. Time to go. Uh, I've just got a couple of things to tidy away. Can you hold my dog for a moment? I am not falling for that one again. Transylvanian water spaniel. Uh, no, I'm not kidding. Look. Oh, Sheila. That's what a Transylvanian water spaniel looks like. No, this is a Tibetan terrier. Oh, yes. And I'm the abominable snowman. Come on, Nori. Come on, Yeti. Will Norman continue to be dogged by bad luck? Will he be hounded from the newspaper business? Has he been barking up the wrong tree from the start? And will he once again find himself in the doghouse, even though the supplement continues to be a howling success? Look out for the next edition of Do It. And for your copy of the supplement, write to the Bellstow Weekly, PO Box 100, Maidstone, Kent.